Hi there, all you little scientists. It's Miss Victoria from the Richwood Library. I hope you're all doing well and you are excited for our next little experiment that we're going to work on today. Um, we are going to be talking about air pressure. You know what this is? A party blower. We can blow into it and it causes this to unroll. This is an example of air pressure. Here is another example. Here is a balloon pump. I have a little balloon here. I'm going to put it on the pump. And blow it up. Now these are small balloons, so that one popped. Let's try another. Let's see if the blue one has a little bit better success. This time I won't blow it up as much. Okay. These are small balloons, so we're not going to blow them up too much. But this is a good example, again, of air pressure. So it's important to understand that spaces are filled with air and that air can have force and move objects. So this is an example of filling a space with air. We filled our balloon with air, but we can only fill it so much because it only has a certain capacity or amount of room. So if we blow it up too much, as we just saw, our balloon will pop. So now that I've demonstrated some examples of air pressure, let's move on to our experiment. Let's start with a definition of air pressure. The air around you has weight and it presses against everything it touches. That pressure is called atmospheric pressure or air pressure. It is the force exerted on a surface by the air above it as gravity pulls it to earth. The more air that is above us, the higher the air pressure will be. And now here's a description of our experiment. We are going to investigate how force and pressure relate to air pressure. You can use things from around the house to easily demonstrate this. You will be able to physically propel or move an object with just air. Here are the things you'll need. Two kitchen sponges, one drinking straw, one plastic Ziploc type bag, clear packing tape, pom-poms, toy cars, Legos, or any other items you choose. Now that we have our materials together, we're going to start by making our homemade air pump. So in order to do this, we're going to position the sponges one on top of the other inside the plastic Ziploc or similar type bag. Then we'll put the drinking straw between the sponges so that part of the straw is inside the bag and the other part is outside. Next, we'll seal up the bag using both the Ziploc seal and packing tape. Now I actually use two bags. I had one bag inside the other in addition to the packing tape, just to make it extra secure. The first time I blew into the bag, that it actually ripped, so I decided to put it into a second bag. This is what your finished product will look like, and now I'm going to blow into the straw to inflate the bag so that we can begin our experiment. I started with the pom-pom by putting it on a flat surface and placing the bag behind it so that the straw was positioned to blow the pom-pom. Then I pressed down hard on the sponges and watched the object as it moved away. I repeated this process with our Lego piece and the toy car. And of course, you can try this with any other objects you may have around the house that you'd like to test out. So what did you notice or observe as we did this experiment? Well, if we consider our three objects, the pom-pom and the Lego piece were pretty easily moved by the air blown through our handmade air pump. The car had a little bit more difficulty, perhaps because it's heavier. If we talk about the things that we've learned so far about air pressure, we know that air pressure is, is a force. And a force is a push or pull. Another example of this is when the wind pushes a sailboat through the water, it's exerting a force. Forces can make things move, as we saw with our three objects. They can change their speed, so some objects may move faster or further than others, as we saw with the pom-pom and the Lego piece versus the car. Or they can change their shape, 
as we saw at the very beginning of our video when I demonstrated the party blower and the balloon being blown up. You can try this experiment on the same objects that we used or some other things that you may have around your house and see what observations you can make in addition to what we've talked about. Now to wrap up our lesson on air pressure, I wanted to share a few interesting facts with you. First, the pressure of air molecules decreases or goes down as you move upward from sea level into the atmosphere or into the air. So the highest pressure is at sea level and the lowest pressure is in the clouds or on top of a mountain. Another interesting tidbit, when gravity pulls an apple, for example, toward the ground, that is demonstrating the force of air pressure. So when an apple falls off a tree onto the ground, that's actually gravity and air pressure doing their job. And last, anytime force is exert exerted onto a surface by air is an example of air pressure. One example that we see every day and may not even think about is the tires on our car. The car tires are filled with air that cannot escape. The weight of the car pushes on the air in the tires and the air pushes back. Can you think of any other examples of air pressure? I hope you have fun in doing this experiment on your own and finding some new ways to test out air pressure. Thanks for joining me and I hope to see you again soon.